Welcome to our itinerary podcast by Trip Pursuit. This is Dishika and this is Sadman. Today we are here uh, with Valerio Simoncini. He has been working as a wildlife biologist and international naturalistic tour guide. And uh, today we will be exploring about Tuscany. He has been working uh, as a naturalistic guide in four continents, America, uh, the Pacific Ocean, uh, North Africa, and as well as Europe. Yeah. So that's quite interesting. Yeah. We have him uh, with us here and we are going to be exploring about Tuscany, uh, in particularly about Florence. Yes, we will be talking about, uh, if possible, the itinerary of uh, a tour in Florence or a tour in uh, Tuscany, Italy. Okay, so uh, hi, Valer Valerio, hello. How are you, Valerio? Yeah. I'm okay, very, very okay. I'm here next to the city of Florence in a, in a hill. Uh, you know, Tuscany is very hilly. It's a super hilly region. Yes. Uh, yeah, here it's, it's a very cold morning. It's windy and cold, but it's, it's perfect. <laughs> we have, it's a sunny day, super sunny day. Yeah. Great, great. So, uh, is this a good time to visit in Tuscany? Like uh, this time, you were saying that it's cold in Florence and it's cold in Tuscany. So, is this the right time to visit that place, or you would you prefer some time else? Yeah. Okay. I can say that uh, depends. Okay, but of course, February usually is the most cold month in Italy. Okay, mm -hmm. especially here in Tuscany, but it's different, for example, respect to November and December, mm. because November and December is very, very rainy. Okay, okay. So now we have very, very cold temperature, but the day like tomorrow, today, it's, it's super sunny. So it's perfect to, to stay outside and discover, exploring, you know. Of course, when we will enter in spring, so the end of March, April, May, for me, those are the perfect months to, to come and visit Italy. Also because, you know, our summer is very hot. So, yeah. of course, I, I love summer like June, July, August, but to be a tourist and travel around Italy can be very, very tough. You know, in, yeah. in yeah. Summer. so perfect months are spring, so March, April, May, and also the end of summer, September and October. Mm -hmm. yeah. Great. That's it. Yeah. Great. So, uh, uh, Valerio, you were, uh, uh, from your profile, we saw that you were a specialist in environment, naturalistic tourism. Could you yeah. uh, introduce us to that tourism, this tourism, what is uh, naturalistic tourism, what is in uh, tourism with environment with in focus? Of course, so if we talk uh, specifically about Tuscany, the region of Tuscany, first of all, because uh, sometimes tourists come here and can make, you know, like mistakes, errors, mm. Florence, is, is a city and it's like the capital of Tuscany. Mm -hmm. When you are in Florence, you are already in Tuscany. Hey. Tuscany is not just a place, it's, it's a huge region yeah. with a lot of biodiversity. It's very, very uh, heterogenic, so with mm. big difference. We do have the sea, we, we have the coast in Tuscany, we have mountains, we have hills, uh, forests, and a lot of rivers, no? Hmm. So I have like uh, a background, very scientific. Hmm. And, but of course, I love to stay with people and to, to talk and to explain hmm. uh, to people, no? Uh, about history, culture, but of course about nature. Hmm. So I think my region uh, gives me this, this imprinting uh, because it's so in in a in a region in just in a in a piece of Italy you can find a lot of different things. Okay, also about nature, animal, plants. Mm. So of course, when we talk about 
tourists, first of all, in Tuscany, mm. we talk about all the difference of wine, mm -hmm. <laughs> because we do have yes. very, very good wine, yeah. and yeah. any different valley in, in, inside the same region, any different river, give the name to the valley and in any different valley you can find different taste of wine because depends to the grape yeah. uh, to the way how you grow grapes and after you transform and you make wine mm -hmm. mm. so wine and also extra virgin olive oil because also in Tuscany we produce organic pure extra virgin olive oil yeah. Those those trees that we have here are now exposed to the sun, to the wind on the hills of Tuscany. Mm -hmm. uh, they can produce really very, very good uh, extra virgin olive oil. That is, I think, the first one for quality in the world. Okay, mm -hmm. Spain, for example, is the first one nation for production, for quantity, for the amount. Yeah, but Italy we have the best quality. I I don't know the one that <laughs> say it, okay. It's just uh, a common yeah. sense. So, and in, in Tuscany, it's we we do have really very very good uh, yeah. extra virgin olive oil. Okay, also yeah. in some other region of Italy. Italy, Italy does Italy doesn't Italy have uh, olive oils too? Of course, Sicily, you can go in Puglia, that is southeast, you can go in the southwest, but yeah. also in uh, Liguria and all the region along the Mediterranean Sea, yeah, yeah. okay, yeah. because it's very sunny and it's very windy. For example, in winter, uh, when it's cold and raining, uh, olive trees, they need wind because mm. the wind can oxygenate and, and clean the branches mm. and that is good you now sometimes we do we lose all the production mm. because yeah. there is a sort of uh, mosquito bugs that can eat and infect the okay. olive okay uh -huh. so more windy and sunny is the area where you have the trees and that is better for for, for the whole so for example here in Tuscany is perfect for for yeah. the weather condition yeah that's great of course when you go and you travel you can walk through through grapes or olive trees it's not just about that when when, when you walk in Tuscany uh, for example I work 80 90 percent with tourists from from the states from America Okay. And when you stay there and you walk also just in, in, in an ancient path, in a trail in, in, in Tuscany, mm -hmm. you can feel the history because it's, it's completely different respect to the, to the new continent of America. Mm -hmm. Like we were talking about Florence. Yes. You go in the city center of Florence today, 2023, yes. and are the same tiny roads and sometimes it's impossible to enter with the car because those streets were made for horses and not for yeah. cars. So when you when you stay there, you you can feel the the, the also the history and all the time that yeah. those houses, uh, yeah. all the people that live there, and and yeah. this. so it's 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 a, it's a sort of contrast right now yeah. because yeah. we do have. The modern uh, age that want to you know develop, and we, we are we are in Europe, but maybe I Italy is one of the um, less developed nation right mm -hmm. now in Europe. Mm -hmm. But okay. also we are proud about that because we still have the the, the, the history and the ancient yeah. ways. Mm -hmm. It's it's all when you live and you you experience Italy, you can feel this contrast. Okay, about the mother and, and, and the ancient. Right. Yeah, great. So, uh, Valerio, are you uh, familiar with the concept of sustainable tourism? Yeah, yeah, mostly, yes. Mm -hmm. So, how, uh, how do they compare sustainable tourism and environmental tourism, the tourism that you were expert in? So, are these... Yeah. Uh, sorry, yeah. Yeah, are these similar or how different are they? 
No, um, that is a good point because uh, you you say no when you presented me. I I lived also for a lot of years outside of Italy, outside of Europe, yeah. so I experienced different countries. Yes, and um, I can complain also about my nation, but also I'm very happy. And, and proud about a point in Italy and especially in Tuscany. Mm -hmm. We do have a lot of rules, a lot of law that always try to keep the landscape. Mm -hmm. How was like two, three centuries ago, five centuries ago is the same now. Mm -hmm. We do have rules uh, for the city, for the town where people live, and we do have different rules for the countryside. Mm. So it's like the government won't try always to to keep uh, the countryside who was. Mm. It's not so easy, for example, that uh, you buy a, a property, a piece of land, mm. and from nothing you can you can build something new. Mm. No, if 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 you own uh, soil, mm. you have just to use the soil, like to grow grapes, uh, olive mm. trees, and and this stuff. And in a sort of way that is good because keep the the beauty of 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 the land of the nature, no. So of course there are some new uh, professional mm. uh, like kind of job like a, a environmental guide mm. that you can take people, bring people in the nature. You can explain. You can teach, for example, with with scholars with mm -hmm. high school, with children. Mm -hmm. And so it's a way to uh, to share the knowledge about nature, but the impact, it's always, you know, like uh, not so strong and to 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 affect the nature. So in, in, in that case, yeah, here in Tuscany, we do have a lot of rules that yeah. always try to preserve uh, the landscape and, and all the biodiversity of, of, of nature. Mm -hmm. yeah. So I've uh, actually uh, researched a bit and I saw that uh, Tuscany is very um, aware of the nature and also has the uh, responsible tourism, right? Yes. Uh, so yes. Uh, what does uh, the government of Italy exactly do to preserve these places? The, to uh, conserve the wildlife or nature, uh, nature mm -hmm. spots. Yeah, for example, we do have a lot of small reserve. Okay, mm -hmm. like it's not. It, it's also possible to find big uh, national parks where the wildlife is protected. You can go there and, for example, an ant, deer, mm -hmm. or any kind of animal or. Mm -hmm. But especially for me personally, what I think uh, really matter here is that we do have a lot of small uh, mm -hmm. piece of land mm -hmm. and with different name. I mean, not just national park, but just local reserve, regional park, and all those uh, sort of um, mm -hmm. law. They mm -hmm. try to keep in different ways, you know, the, the, the landscape. Mm -hmm. So, for example, when just just to say, if you mm -hmm. are not um, practice to, to, to stay in Tuscany or in Italy, mm -hmm. any uh, private owner of, of a piece of land with just olive trees, okay? Okay. Anybody that is no uh the owner of that that piece of land mm -hmm. but anybody can enter in the property right. you you are allowed to walk through the trees mm -hmm. okay because the law say that okay mm -hmm. so you can lay down and stay at the sun you can you can just stay behind the trees and just to smell nature mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and and that, that is i mean you are allowed to do that because the mm -hmm. government say that okay mm -hmm. but no more than that so oh, the, the okay. yeah the, the owner can be there in for example in the same day uh cutting branches of the trees mm -hmm. cleaning working with the soil mm -hmm. and you are a, a, a um like a foreigner nobody know you mm -hmm. 
-hmm. but nobody can tell you nothing because you can stay there and you can enjoy nature okay yeah. but no more than that great 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 okay so it's, it's, it's a for me it's good because you you can you can enjoy nature but without uh, doing something bad no right. Mm -hmm. right. no that's 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 actually very good yeah. so yeah. uh, there you go. we will now move on to the you know exploring tuscany and exploring florence the whole part okay so mm -hmm. could you provide us an itinerary of uh, florence or an itinerary of tuscany uh, let's yeah. say that we'll be there for seven days or let's say that we'll be there for five days and you do provide tours, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, first of all, depends uh, mostly if, if you want to know if you are more focused in history, mm -hmm. culture or, for example, wine nature. testing, nature and like this, okay? Yeah. Uh, of course, you can start from Florence and yeah. at least if you want to know very, very well the city, you will need two days, right. two okay. full days at least, okay? okay? Because okay. Florence is, is a small city. It's not big. It's, it's not a, a metropolis. But inside the historical center of Florence, mm -hmm. you have a lot of museum. And you can okay. spend minimum half day just in one museum, okay? okay. But, but it's easy that you can walk all the historical city center, just walking, okay? okay? There is Ponte Vecchio, the old bridge to go across the Arno River, mm -hmm. and there is the, the side that, that we call Old Trarno, that is like the side of the city for locals, mm -hmm. and the historical center that is more for tourists, but you can walk through, mm -hmm. through the, the street, through the bridges, and mm -hmm. it's easy to walk around is no big. And of course, to ch like you can spend one day in the city of Florence visiting mm -hmm. the Duomo, visiting the museum. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And also, for example, just taking a public bus, a, a city bus, right. mm -hmm. you can go in one of the two sides of the city because Florence mm -hmm. is in a valley. Mm -hmm. So okay. around Florence is full of hills and mountains, okay? okay? For example, without renting a car, you can take a public bus from the city mm -hmm. center mm -hmm. and you can go in Fiesole, mm -hmm. that is a small town just over the city. And from there, you can have the view of the, the entire mm -hmm. Firenze, okay? Mm -hmm. In 20 minutes, you are on the top of, of, of the hill of Fiesole, and you can see everything. Or you can go mm -hmm. in the opposite side, for example, Saminiato al Monte, yeah. Saminiato al Monte, I think you know Piazzale Michelangelo, that is yes. the big yes. okay? Yeah. Uh, just uh, over, no just reason. over Piazzale yeah. Michelangelo, like uh, 100 steps, you walk and there is the most ancient church of Florence that is right. called mm. Saminiato al Monte, okay? mm. more than, more than 1000 years old. Mm -hmm. And from there you have the view of everything, of the valley, of the Arno River, of the city. So that is also, for example, a good spot for the evening to, to watch the sunset over the city of Florence and like mm -hmm. this. Mm -hmm. And more than that, from Florence, if you want to move, there is the Chianti, that mm -hmm. is the area between Florence and Siena in the mm -hmm. middle. Okay. That, that is called Chianti, where we grow and produce the Chianti wine. But it is, it is a huge area, okay, between Florence and Siena. Right. And after you can go to the coast, like you can, you can go to Pisa, visit the city of Pisa. It's mm -hmm. one hour with the highway, Florence, Pisa, driving. Mm -hmm. Just one so, hour. So just to clear the confusion, this isn't mm -hmm. the Tower of Pisa, but this is the city of Pisa. Yeah, in the city of Pisa, you, you can find the tower, of course. Yeah. Oh, the, yeah. piece, the yes. Tower of Pisa in this city? Yes, uh, yes. Yes, yes, oh, yes, of course. Okay, okay, okay. Of course. That's of great. Course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And Pisa, it's maybe it's also uh, smaller than Florence. Hmm. Right now, it's a very, very uh, alive city. It's, it's mm -hmm. a universitarian city, okay? okay? But about tourism, 
everything 100% is concentrated in the tower of Pisa, yeah. okay? Yeah. And when you arrive in Pisa, that is just one hour driving from Florence, yeah. you are 15 minutes from the sea, from the coast. Mm. So once you are there in Pisa, you can go and visit the Tyrrhenian Sea, so the, the sea oh. of, of Tuscany. There is the city of Livorno. Uh, nobody knows, but it's, it's a very, very beautiful city. For yeah. example, Livorno have a like a, the historical center of Livorno is called La Venezia, the Venice, because it's very similar to, to the city of Venice. A lot of channel with the water that come from the from the sea. Yeah. And you can take a battello, so a small boat, and yeah. you can go and travel along the the channel and, and visit the the center of Livorno. Yeah. Okay. Ah, okay. okay. So two days in Florence and then one day in Pisa. And See, one day you can spend one day uh, between, for example, Pisa and Livorno. Mm -hmm. Yeah. To, to visit the coast. Yeah. And after we have the south of Tuscany, we call mm -hmm. Maremma. So mm -hmm. the the the, pro the province of Grosseto mm -hmm. that's okay. still very very wild. For example, in Maremma, we do have a regional park. Mm -hmm. okay. And Maremma is known for, for the beauty of the nature. Okay. okay. It's very peaceful. So, yeah. yeah. So in Maremma, uh, is the pronunciation Ma right? Maremma. Maremma. Uh -huh. Maremma. Okay. Yeah. So in Maremma, do, uh, do they speak English? How popular is English? <laughs> no, I think if you go. For the season, like spring and summer, of course, pe people people speak English. Uh, mm -hmm. I was going to to tell you, for example, a lot of people from Germany, from yeah. Holland, like Netherlands, mm -hmm. yeah. when when they they retired for for job, usually yeah. they move in Tuscany and they move in Maremma uh -huh. because it's very quiet, it's peaceful. And yeah, so that you, yeah. you can enjoy the the, the easy life. Yeah, okay. there. Right. So uh, what? So then, uh, two days in Florence, one day in Pisa and Livorno, Livorno. Livorno. and then we move on to uh, Maremma. 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 Yeah, is the way to go to Rome. Okay, to the okay. south. Okay. Oh, yeah. okay. 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 When you are there, for example, you can also, and the same from Florence, from Florence, yeah. you can go to the west, so to the yeah. coast, to Pisa. Or yeah. Also, if you go to visit the Chianti, yeah. when you, you are in, in the Chianti area, you can go to Siena. Okay. Siena is, is very famous too. It's a very, very nice city. Okay. And less crowded than Florence, but it's very touristic too. You know about the Palio of Siena, the races with horses. Oh, along yes, the... yes, yes, yes. Yeah. yeah. Okay, mm -hmm. so that, that is the center square in the historical center of Siena. Mm -hmm. Okay. And all people, Senesi, the people, the native of Siena, they go crazy for this race. Okay. They are very proud about the Palio. Yeah. Uh, okay. Okay. So, uh, how about the wine tourism in Italy? Uh, like uh, the wine tourism in this part. So you said about the wine of Florence, mm -hmm. the wine of Tuscany. So uh, I heard that there are different sorts of. Like you said it yourself that the wine is different in each valley, each area. The wine is different. So could mm -hmm. you rank the wines out there? Uh, from where to where, where should I taste the wines? And for tasting the wine, why should I go? Okay, yeah, like I was telling you, um, for example, if you go in the Chianti area, just yeah. out of Florence, between yeah. Florence and Siena, yeah. you see immediately you go out of the city, you can feel the difference. Okay, the city is stressful and crowded. You just go 10 minutes out of Florence, Mm -hmm. Yeah, and you can feel the peace of the countryside. Okay, in the countryside, because Tuscany is very hilly. Yes, in any valley and in any hill, you can find like uh, an ancient castle, for example. Right yeah. now, ninety percent of the the middle age castle, the medieval castle, yeah. uh, the owner in on on the land 
around yeah. the case or no, yeah. grow grapes and olive trees. So okay. you can go and visit the castle and at the okay. same time, you can book for a wine testing. And in, oh. in any different castle, you, know, you can taste the different wine of that specific part of Tuscany or part of Chianti, okay? Would of you, course, would you in Tuscany... Yeah. Sorry? Uh, would you recommend a few places? Like, you know, you were the expert from there, right? Okay. We can go and visit, but you were the expert. We want the so, opinion from you. Would okay, you so yeah. the heart of Chianti is the valley of the Greve River, okay? Mm -hmm. Greve, Val di Greve. Okay. Around the Greve Valley, you can find Castello di Verrazzano. Mm -hmm. Okay. It's a very, very beautiful, like still the same, like in, in seven, eight hundred years ago. It's a castle in, in, in a top of a hill. Yeah. Right. And, and, and they do wine, of course, a different kind, okay? Especially San Giovese. Right. Okay. San Giovese is the name of the ancient grapes that the Etruscan people, so I mean, before the Roman Empire, the local people, the native people of Tuscany, the Etruscan, they started to grow and to produce wine mm -hmm. through yeah. the Sangiovese grape, okay? Yeah. So when you go in Chianti, you can taste the real Sangiovese wine. Oh. We call 100% Sangiovese, 100% Sangiovese, okay? Mm -hmm. That is the real uh, wine of Tuscany. So oh. you can go in Castello di Verrazzano, um, Castellinuzza e Piuca, Mm -hmm. It's in the same valley, but the opposite side, and you can you can feel you can taste the difference. Okay. Also between you know wine and extra virgin olive oil, you you stay in the same valley, but in, in the two different mm -hmm. side of the valley, because it's different wind mm -hmm. uh, is exposed to the sun in a different way. So you you taste the what people grow there, and it's yeah. different. Okay. Yeah. So we've already spent six days in Tuscany. So on the last day, uh, how should I end my trip? So what is the last thing that I should see before I leave Tuscany? Ooh. <laughs> uh, uh, um, we do have also Apennines, that mm -hmm. is a, a big mountain complex. Right. Okay? In Italy, we do have two big mountain complex, the Alps, that okay. are on the north, yeah. Yeah. and the Apennines that come across Tuscany. So if you like, just to change your point of view and experience something different, yeah. you can go to the north of Tuscany, like over yeah. Florence, over Pistoia, Prato, over Lucca, mm -hmm. okay. and there you find beautiful mountains. No hills, yeah. like in the Chianti, real mountains. Mountains, okay. okay. It's a way just to have a different perspective yeah. of, of Tuscany. But yeah. also, if you like uh, fancy places, yeah. uh, sandy beach, you can go yeah. to Versilia. Mm -hmm. Ver Versilia is the north coast of Tuscany, at the border with Liguria, very close to Cinque Terre National Park. Okay, yeah. You still be in Tuscany, yeah. but you see the landscape is completely different. That is okay. Versilia. Forte dei Marmi is very close to uh, the caves of Carrara marble. You know the white, expensive marble, the Carrara marble? Yeah. If you go in Florence, a lot of sculpture and monuments are made with the white stone, the Carrara marble. Yeah. Yes, yes. The Carrara marble come uh, from those mines and caves at the feet of the Alps, Alpi okay. Apuane. That mm -hmm. is the region where the Alps and the Apennines meet, two, two mm -hmm. different mountain complexes, okay? okay? And so at the feet of those mountains, there is the sea and there is the city of Carrara, Massa, and also Viareggio. Viareggio is like the capital of Versilia. Like right. now in February, there is the Carnival, mm -hmm. Carnevale di Viareggio. Okay. So a, a lot of... Yeah, a lot of tourists from Italy go there to see, you know, all the the the, the, the party and people yeah. that dress in different way and <laughs> okay, yes. okay. Okay. So we have four minutes here and 
I will give you specifically two minutes to talk about the budget of visiting Tuscany of the whole okay. trip. So also, should I book a tourist guide like uh, you give tours probably, right? So should I go solo yeah. or should I book some tourist guide? Yeah, uh, the same. Depend to to you to to your I mean feeling of adventure. Mm -hmm. Of course, I can say if you want to experience very very well the city of Florence, I recommend you to book a tourist guide okay. because usually are people that study for a lot of years at the university history languages and they know very very well any museum so you can enter into the museum with a tour guide and mm -hmm. really like in a day uh, you can you can learn something that maybe people need five years of university right. uh, to learn. Okay. the same if you want to go in the county or around in, in, in the forest, in a national park or in the coast, you can book a, like, a guide like me, an environmental guide. That mm -hmm. I already know like the best places like Kezol, uh, mm -hmm. family factory where you can eat local food. And so you can save like time, energy and go strictly directly to the to to the best point no okay. about so, the budget uh depends no again where you stay of course the city of florence right now is pretty expensive mm -hmm. yeah. but of course if you book in a in a hotel like along the arno river or in a hill just out of the city I think it's something uh, special. You, you will remember no forever that that. So I mean, uh, the play, the, the 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 money you spend and the experience you have, uh, you are in in a, in, a, in a good balance. Okay. Okay. After that, uh, for example, restaurants mm. in in the city center, there are uh, as I tell you before, no, part of the city is touristic and the other part is more for local. Mm -hmm. okay. If you want really to experience, like eat well, mm. but, but without going in a touristic place, mm. you can just go around and ask to people, like to local Italians, mm. uh, <laughs> hopefully they can talk in English and mm. they can give you some tips where to go and and eat something like the, the, the usual Italian people eat. Mm -hmm. Okay, so now let's uh, try to get into some exact figures about how much it would cost into uh, while visiting Tuscany and visiting that your the itinerary that is suggested by you, you know, the five mm -hmm. days in Tuscany, how much would that cost? Let's say that I stay in Airbnb, how much would that cost? Ah, okay. Uh, if you stay in a Airbnb in Florence, yeah. uh, you know, everything is a little bit more expensive than yeah. the rest of Tuscany, you know? Okay. So, for example, you stay in a um, matrimoniale, so double double room for two person. Okay. Uh, of course, can be less than 100 euro for day, for night, okay? okay. Like okay. 80, 70 90 depends you know if okay. you want the breakfast with you in the morning and especially everything depends where you stay okay. in florence you can okay. find for example an apartment very clean and everything but uh in a in a house like with where for example students live mm. or you can find an apartment in a side of the river with the view of the monuments and can be the double price okay mm -hmm. so you can arrive also 200 euro for night or if you go in a hotel five stars hotel mm -hmm. also thousand euro for night depending if you want jacuzzi or or no okay but usually it can be for um like bnb or airbnb can be ar around 70, 80 mm -hmm. uh, euro for night for two persons. Okay. 
okay. uh, in Florida. Okay. Yeah. So about the car rent or public, yeah, public, uh, taking they, public buses or public transportation. But, yes. Yeah. So how? Yeah, that is these options. That is the point I was telling about. You no, know? uh, here in Italy, usually everywhere in Italy, we do use a lot trains. Okay? okay, so the the web of trains and it's it's very good. Mm. Of course, if you take train in Italy, you have to be patient, very patient, because ninety percent of the time train have a delay. It's it's oh. it's you know okay. okay. Can be five minutes, can be one hour or two hour okay. delay. Okay. So uh, does Tuscany have the TGV? No, no. Um, okay, TGV. It's it's in French. Okay. We do we we do have something similar that we call Freccia Rossa. Okay. It's the fastest train. Okay. 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 So I was telling you when you um, you move around with those trains like Freccia Rossa, Freccia Argento, Intercity, mm. usually they are in time. Mm -hmm. but they are like two, three, four times more expensive than the local train, oh, okay? Yes. But with the with the Freccia Rossa, you can move just through the big cities. So mm -hmm. Rome, Florence, Milan, Turin, mm -hmm. Venice, okay? When you arrive in, in, in the big uh, train station, like in Florence, for example, you will land in Rome at the airport, from Rome, you take the, the Freccia Rossa mm. to Florence. Okay. Mm -hmm. when, when you are in the train station of Florence, there you can take a local train, mm -hmm. for example, to go to Pisa or mm. Siena, mm -hmm. you will need more time because the local train make every stop, every little town, villages. <laughs> but it's, it's a way to, to see everything, you know, to see the landscape. Yeah. And so usually with the locals, it's it's easy to move around everywhere mm -hmm. with the local train and it, it is no expensive. Right. Okay, like Firenze Pisa can be less than 15 euro, maybe right. 10 euro. Mm -hmm. uh, depends also if you book a lot of days before is is like cheaper oh, okay so right. it's like airplane tickets yeah yeah okay. with the freccia rossa it's it's the same if you book before is mm -hmm. is um, less expensive mm -hmm. but of course it's like double or like three times more more expensive than the local mm -hmm. but for right. example rome florence mm -hmm. with the freccia rossa is one hour and a half super fast okay. okay you go 300 kilo kilometers uh, per hour with the mm -hmm. fresh mm -hmm. so with the local you need like four five hours mm -hmm. from florence okay. because you have to go pisa livorno and all the way down um. with the fresh rosa you cut uh, mm -hmm. through, through the region and so rome florence it's one hour and a half okay, okay. so it's yeah, it's, it's a fast way to move yeah. uh, in Italy. Okay. But for example, in the big cities, like here in Tuscany, I think, first of all, Florence and Pisa, because in Pisa we have an international airport. Hmm. So there you can find a lot of different places where to rent a car to. Mm -hmm. Okay. And if you want to, to experience the real Tuscany, Mm. I say, yes, you need a car, okay? <laughs> you can, because you can go everywhere, up on yeah. the hills and to visit, you know, family yeah. factories and go out just of, of the hikeways. You know? okay. So there are two options. Mm. Or you rent a car, you no, know, by, by yourself. Mm -hmm. And it's not, it's not so, so expensive. Of course, you need a lot of, for the insurance and a mm -hmm. lot of, like, bureaucratic stuff and papers right. that, that is okay. If you come from the, the States, I remember for sure you need an international drive license. I mean, right. you can use the, the, the drive license mm -hmm. of the States. Mm -hmm. And the same if you want to drive a Vespa, a moto, mm -hmm. okay? Mm -hmm. Because I do also tours for some tour operator, like a guide mm -hmm. with, with the Vespa, 
I know that is something different for from people for people that come from another continent, and it's, it's very nice to go across the the the, the hills of Tuscany with the Vespa. is is, okay. is a way you not know, to to experience everything, but also to drive a Vespa, you need an international drive license. Okay. 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 Yeah. Okay. Um, if you are not like complaining, if you have no problem about money, mm -hmm. you can rent an NCC that is, a, for example, a van, pri pri private van with a private driver. Right. So you are you are no worrying about nothing. You just sit outside, mm -hmm. and the driver can bring you where you want around. Okay. Of course, the NCC have a cost because you have the private driver, and like you can book for half day or a full day the mm -hmm. van with the driver, mm -hmm. and it's like five six times more expensive than if you rent a car for yourself right. okay yeah. okay so what would be the exact figures here like how much would it cost for each the like you said 15 euros for the local train that is from mm -hmm. Florence to Pisa right yeah 15 15 Florence Pisa for with, with the local and Firenze Siena Mm. can be 20 something no more euro but with the local that it's mm -hmm. one hour and a half like the same mm -hmm. go from rome to florence with with the fast train yeah, yeah, okay yeah. Yeah. yeah and to rent a car i think at least if you are you come from out of europe at least uh 40 euro per day mm -hmm. minimum mm -hmm. minimum after that, depends to the kind of car you want. You know, if, if you yeah. want a Jeep, it's more expensive. If you want a tiny Fiat 500, it's maybe 40, 50 euro yeah. for day. Right. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So, yeah. So, what would you recommend a budget for this itinerary of yours? For the seven days. Mm -hmm. Okay. Without talking about the, the flies and just to stay yeah. five, seven days yeah, yeah. In, in, yeah. Yeah. If you want to to book also every day a tour, a tour guide and something like this, I can say between two and 3,000 euro. Right. Okay. okay. That is okay. Just to be, you know, free yeah, to do everything you want yeah. to do to to eat well to drink well to so sleep I shop, well i can shop in that amount of money as well you know what what shopping, shopping. yes I, I i was sure that <laughs> about that question because when you will be in the center of florence right. uh i know that you would like to like just walking around you see mm -hmm. gucci and Prada and Salvatore yeah. Ferragamo, all the shop a, a, around. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, of course you can, you can, you can do <laughs> some shopping too. Yes. <laughs> right. Okay. So, but, to, yeah. but of course, yeah. if you want to buy a lot of stuff like that <laughs> in Florence and, for example, uh, in the Areggio and Forte mm -hmm. de Marmi, I was talking about the Versilia. Mm -hmm. There are a lot of places similar in the Versilia too. Uh, you will need minimum the double or three times the same amount yeah. of money. Right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. So two to three thousand uh, to have a good goal from, yeah. uh, for your itinerary. Okay, yeah. done two to three thousand. So we can visit it. Uh, yeah, <laughs> we can yeah if, if it's just for one week, uh, I think it's, yeah. it's a good experience. Yeah. Okay, okay. So, how do you think like uh, the tour in Tuscany? How, how female friendly is this? Yeah, pe people, sorry. Uh, for, female, or, uh, female friendly. I, I mean, for girls, how safe is it to visit uh, all these places if I were to visit alone or uh, with my partner or something? It's okay. It's it's completely okay if you if you book like um, a package, you no, know, of tour 
with mm -hmm. with the guide with the tour operator that provide for you a bus or mm -hmm. uh, a car and trains and everything it's 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 completely okay i like before when i started to work in the tourism you no know, i was working uh, for different tour operator mm -hmm. i was doing like a day trip for example from florence to the cinque terre national park in mm -hmm. the same day Mm -hmm. visiting like doing a trail a hiking and and after going back to florence mm -hmm. and i saw a lot of like also women and girls traveling by by themselves and it's when, when you have everything like the guide and the tour operator that provides mm -hmm. for you about everything you just have to worry about what to eat at the evening when you go back in florence and and go to the hotel and sleep and okay. that's all it's so not it's not so dangerous yeah, so everything is uh, as long as i have a local uh, tour guide see, 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 oh. see, see, see. okay and how you know convenient or how easy is it to travel with a family i think uh is a good experience first of all because as as i told you it's uh you can find okay uh cultural things history but also mm -hmm. the peace of the beauty of nature so i think for a family with children young children is is very nice to go around and experience tuscany mm -hmm. and of course if you if you want like to spend some uh energy and time uh on the web uh, for sure hotels and also airbnb can give you uh like discount and mm -hmm. package for families so i think it will be convenient also for for families okay yeah. okay. okay so uh, another question that is how is the nightlife in tuscany depends to the season <laughs> first of all because okay. for example right now in winter uh you can find movida but just if you go in the big cities like florence florence is always alive because it's yeah. a uh universitarian city mm -hmm. yeah. but most florence it's uh, a city with a lot of university for people that come from outside not just italian university private university for americans Mm. uh we we do have school private school like uh for example i was working in a school where i was teaching mm -hmm. sciences biology in french because it's a french private school so mm -hmm. when you go in florence it's you you can feel a very international uh environmental mm -hmm. and so during the night you can find everything pub open and disco and like this you mm -hmm. just go out of the city of florence like 20 minutes driving in in a in a beautiful uh, village in the top of a hill mm -hmm. and after 8 pm there is nothing you can find the the, the local bar that we yeah. call circolo where yeah. all uh, where all the whole person all people of of the city are there like playing with cards and see the the match at the tv about football yeah. and that's all so if okay. if you want to to live the 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 nightlife you have to go in the big uh city center in pisa okay. in florence in siena yeah. yes okay. in summer is different because during the summer also in every small village Mm -hmm. at night mm -hmm. you can find a sagra that is the local fiesta the local party of of the village mm -hmm. okay. so at summer you really you you can get enough of parties everywhere in the countryside in, between the olive trees mm -hmm. drinking wine and outside and it, not just in the cities mm -hmm. it uh, is depends uh, mostly about the season here here in Italy okay. between winter and summer it's completely okay. like different yeah okay so i have one final question for you i do have oh, one question as well 
Yeah. I want to know about the museums in Italy. I mean, uh, especially in Tuscany, if there are any uh, museum that I can see. Of course, if you stay in Florence, you mm -hmm. have to visit Uffizi. Mm -hmm. For me, the first of all, Uffizi. And also, if you like to, to walk a little bit, you can go in the Duomo of Florence mm -hmm. and go up until like the, the top. And from there, you have the view of all the city. Okay. Right. Right. But of course, first of all, the Uffizi di Firenze is, is, a, is a huge museum and mm -hmm. you can find really like everything. And for the Uffizi, I will recommend you to book a, a guide, a tour right. guide, explain you everything. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. 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 So thanks for answering. <laughs> I really love museums, so I do hope to uh, visit one day. Okay. Yeah, yeah. But in in Florence, uh, I told you, if you want to visit everything, you will need at least two days. You know, right. you can visit the uh, Palazzo Vecchio. That mm -hmm. was the 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 Dimora, the house of the Medici family. Oh. Yeah. Um, there is a secret path from yeah. the second floor of Palazzo Vecchio that you can walk. You can walk over the Ponte Vecchio and arrive in the other side of the river and arrive to the private garden, uh, okay. Boboli Garden. Okay, mm -hmm. but that private path. It, it's keep it so maybe you need to to book some months before mm -hmm. because it was the part that the Medici family walk yeah. without going through people in the street just to okay. move from the from the Palazzo Vecchio to to the private garden okay right. for example if you if you like those kind of stuff also in a hill just over the city of Florence mm -hmm. there is the house of Galileo Galilei Oh. Yes. And, yes. yes, I know about that. <laughs> and next to the house, there is a um, planetarium, like a part mm -hmm. of the University of Astrophysicians that study yeah. stars. And in memory, no, of Galileo mm -hmm. Galilei is just there next to to this tiny village, Pian dei Giullari, mm -hmm. and where is the, the, the house of Galileo Galilei. And mm -hmm. if you like to for example, from the city center of Florence, half hour walking up to the hill, you can arrive there and, and see the, the house of Galileo Galilei. Oh. Right. Okay. It's full of history everywhere. Here, yeah. 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 <laughs> okay. So now to my question. Yeah. My okay. okay. So my question is, this is a very personal question. It's what's the best pizzeria in Florence? <laughs> Okay, about that, uh, now I found myself a little bit because I had a, a, a favorite pizzeria, mm -hmm. okay. but after the, the COVID uh, pandemic, mm. uh, I was going back there in this place and I found this place closed. Oh. So, yeah, I think, I don't know if they just uh, close forever, but they still close. But what I can say, what I can tell you, it's also we are in Firenze, we are in Tuscany. But for me, if you want to eat the real and good pizza, also yeah. in Florence, you have to look for a pizzeria napoletana. That is the best pizza. Okay. <laughs> that is my, my personal choice. Okay. Yeah. So you go in the center of Florence and you see a touristic restaurant or pizzeria, just mm. skip that and go and looking for a pizzeria napoletana. Right. Okay. <laughs> okay. It's, it's okay. the real pizza. <laughs> so I guess if I ever lose him, when I go to Florence, he can be. <laughs> find him there. <laughs> yeah. But for example, in Florence, in Tuscany, we do have very, very good ice cream, gelato. Oh. Gelato. So gelateria, everywhere you can find gelateria. Okay. Oh, okay. Yes. Okay, yes. okay. So that's more interesting for me. <laughs> uh -huh. We do have no a lot of different kind of fruits and so a different flavor of ice cream, organic and very tasty. And yes, that, that is something that Tuscany can offer you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. 
Okay, so we are at the end of our podcast here. Uh, so audience, anyone who is watching this, if you ever go to Florence, please talk, please get in touch with Valerio Simoncini. Uh, Good. I believe that he's the best person out there to guide you to all Thank the you. places he suggested. Okay. So, so uh, we are here uh, to uh, our uh, Valerio Simoncini. Uh, with a lot of, we've known a lot about uh, Tuscany. Tuscany and uh, Florence and also what to see there, what to eat there, if we can shop there as well. So yeah. uh, we're already here at the end and uh, see you soon uh, next time uh, with probably another travel guide. And so uh, subscribe to our channel and we will be exploring more uh, with itinerary podcast, Trip Pursuit. Thank you, everyone. Thank you.